Hello and welcome to Paint the Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be chatting with Adam Southgate, who is a cork and chrome artist, an art student, and a finalist in this year's Brisbane Portrait Prize. Adam's going to share with us the creative process that went into building his piece Awake Elsewhere, how he was able to interpret the emotions and mood going on right now onto canvas. So I really hope you enjoy this conversation and let's get to it. Hey Adam, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Eddie. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. So you've just dropped your painting literally at the powerhouse. You were just telling us about how you feel about it. So continue on. So honestly, it's been a bit, it's my first prize I've ever entered. So it's a bit different feeling for me. Like I just, I feel like I'm still getting used to being a finalist um, as kind of an accomplishment, I guess. There was 760 something entries and they only had 71 finalists. So it's about, you know, less than 10%. So it's a pretty good to get into the finalists. I didn't actually go last year and I haven't been to one of the finalist exhibits before, but it's just a lot different when you see them in person. One of them was like three, three meters by like two meters. It was like <gasps> giant, you know, it was like huge. It's like more of a daunting experience seeing them in person and a little like, oh, okay, shoot. Like, <laughs> this is real. Like these are this the competition, the, you yeah. know? Like, like these are my competitors. <laughs> yeah, I felt a little like humbled by the size of some of these works and just how detailed they were. Like. I I do a lot of detailed work, but I usually work very small. This one that I did about half a meter, it's not very big, but it's big for me. I usually work A5, so pretty small. That's huge. So do you mind describing your painting for the listeners? So my painting is a self-portrait of me. I know that on the podcast, we're comfortable talking about mental health and things. So I thought I'd, you know, share the kind of inspiration behind mine. With COVID going on and everything, I've had a few friends pass away and been in self-isolation just kind of in my head a lot trying my best to be productive and also um, rest and just kind of this weird kind of place of just trying to balance everything and just kind of feel through everything and be kind to myself one of the main things that i was struggling with was just my sleep schedule you know if the sun starts coming up and i really know i need to close my eyes put my tuck my beanie over my eyes you know and try to get to sleep you couldn't sleep or was it that you were doing things just that moment before bed that kind of is just I have anxiety sometimes and I just it's I find it hard just kind of drift off I think my mind is still is still going sometimes I just like I'll watch movies or paint you know just try to keep myself busy until I'm almost like exhausted to the point where I'm just kind of drifting to sleep and then it's a lot easier for me breathing on my friends and and just that whole time period was kind of the inspiration behind my self-portrait it's one night very spontaneously, actually, I was just in the back, like I just had uh, washed up after painting that night. It was about three in the morning. I'm in the laundry basin, the light coming in from the kitchen, very subtle light. Like took my phone, put it on selfie mode and like just try to try out a few little compositions. And I looked really exhausted in my face because I hadn't been sleeping very much. And so that was kind of what I was trying to capture, the, the weird kind of state of time that we're in, you know. And Were you for- taking that? photo with the intention of I'm going to make a portrait for the Brisbane Portrait Prize? Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't for the Brisbane Portrait Prize. Uh, the intention wasn't that. It was just kind of trying to capture that mood of, the, of how I was feeling and something I wanted to paint. I have been doing more self-portraits recently than I ever have. Like, it's just something that I haven't really done in the past. So I've been experimenting with painting myself in different ways, you know, like doing a project where I play with the archetype of the fool, gather like detritus around my home and like throw it on myself and like build this weird kind of character and and make fun of myself in a way and take a picture and try and paint that to kind of play around with just like goofy, spontaneous self in a way. And I actually just started painting the portrait in the last week of um, the the entries being open. Like it was a Wow. So I kind of prepped a bunch of uh, panels and canvases for myself just to have ready for when I want to make something. What does prepping the... When I, when I get a panel, I don't want to paint on raw wood because the oil will, will go into the wood and it will kind of degrade over time. And so what I do is I use something called GAC 100, which is just basically like an acrylic binder. It just seals the wood. I like to put it like, you know, three to five layers just to kind of 
have wow. a really nice smooth surface and with some tooth. It's just like being part of every step of the process. It's fun making my own panels, making my own canvases. That's great. So you've, you'd already done this work, so you already had a panel ready to go, and then your inspiration is striped. You've got, you've got your yeah. reference photo. Exactly. So like during COVID, I've been getting a lot of art supplies. I have all these oil paints. I've been making a bunch of color charts, really exploring color. So I wanted to stretch myself, do something big, think of who I wanted to paint, kind of thinking about my friends that passed. And I was just like, oh, you know, like maybe like I just need to reflect and take this time to kind of paint myself. And it's almost an honoring of them, but also just like an honoring of myself and kind of some kind of self-care. And that's all my life's been about recently with COVID is like taking care of myself, grieving for my friends. So I was like, that's what I'm going to do, you know. I've also been exper experimenting with divine symmetry, the golden ratio, the rectangles, swirling squares. There's a bunch of technical terms. What you see in nature, how they've got the, there's that, yeah, formula, that mathematical formula for... Exactly, you got it. So it's like, you know, you, you see the spiral, like you've heard of the spiral and things like in the shells and things yeah. like that. It's also in the way that, that plants organize themselves, the leaves on their, their branches, like... They do it in a certain ratio as it moves through the plant. And I use that ratio in my painting. So what I, you, you, you take the, the rectangle of the, the panel and you divide it up with some diagonal lines that create this grid that has that ratio inherent in it visually. It's, it's, it's hard to explain quickly, but it's yeah. like the reciprocals of the, of the rectangle. And that's why they call it a whirling square. But And the grid is so much more complex than <laughs> what I... <laughs> So, Imagine you saying it's amazing. I use that grid and I built up my underdrawing and, yeah. and I overlay that over my, my reference photo. And then I move my reference photo so that I'm aligning like things like my eyes or just things that I want to draw attention to, like maybe the, the fold in my brow, like to bring some more emotion in. I put those on key points in that grid that, wow. are, that are like things that your eye are drawn to. So that's how the grid works. It's like all the intersections of the angles are things that are your eyes are drawn to so that's amazing so because i'm just i just pulled out the reference photo so you didn't distort the size like the shape of your face at all but you just moved it up and down and across so that yeah your eyes almost are just above halfway it looks like and your exactly. whole face fills the canvas so the top of your beanie is you know very close to the top of the canvas and then your chin is quite quite close to the bottom and you're looking sideways and your expression really there's so much emotion like you said that the folds in your um face are really um accentuating <laughs> that that fold in my brow is something i have a very kind of a pensive almost like stern i have it too <laughs> yeah you know, like it's like my bitch resting face like i have that you know like, <laughs> When I first look at my expression in that photo, it, it almost seems like almost angry to me, but, but I, I, the, the reception that I've got, which is what I wanted actually, was that it, there's this sadness in my eyes, which is kind of what I was going for. The title of the work is actually Awake Elsewhere. There's multiple meanings to it. They're, they're still here in energy, like they, they haven't gone anywhere. They're, they're elsewhere, they're awake elsewhere. But then it's ta also talking about me because my friends passed in San Diego and I feel very far away. So I'm awake in, in, in Australia, but like, you know, with time zones and things, it's like, I, it's like I'm almost over there during the day when I'm up at 3 a.m. in the morning. And just also just being in my head a lot, you know, it's like I might be present in my body, but like my body's there, but I'm not really there. I'm like awake somewhere else, like thinking about my friends or just not really present because I'm just like exhausted and like a zombie, you know? Yes. So there's a lot of different ways you can read into that title. And this portrait just happens to be the way it is based on where I was at that time. You know, like that painting is a very dark painting. There's a lot of a shadow. There's like a lighting on one side of the face and the other side of the face is very um, dark and it's in a lot of shadow with very like subtle lighting maybe on the, the other cheek. Yeah, it's fantastic. Almost the whole left side of your face is in shadow and you can just see the glimmer in your eye on that side. And then even that first um, picture you've got there of the process where you've blocked out the dark areas, I can see how that's really allowing that depth to be from the beginning and then how you can shade over that. I like to start with the dark values because it, it's easier to first start with your darkest darks because 
when you have other tones on there, it can kind of distort the way you're seeing those darks. So it might not be as dark as it actually is. Unreal. How long, how many hours do you think you put into this piece? So I don't have an exact amount of hours, but um, upwards of like, you know, eight to 13 hours a day for five days. So what is that like, you know, maybe 60, 70 hours? Yeah. How did you know, going back to the Brisbane Portrait Prize and your piece, how did you know that it was finished? There was elements of it that were just like, okay, I'm running out of time. I had to let it dry. And um, the next day, like, like the next day, I was getting it photographed by my friend Lewis Lim, like for the, for the Poet Portrait Prize. And so I had, I had to let it, I had to call it done because I had to let it dry so that I could oil it out right before he took the photo. And so your background from other works I've seen you do, you've done a lot of drawing and a lot of pen work. So do you think this is your, that you're trying to, you brought that drawing into painting, that sort of style naturally, and then you're kind of wanting to move towards, yeah, testing out the painterly. Yes, for sure. Um, I have this background of like photorealism with drawing and really spending like hours and hours and hours, little fine details, very small drawings. So I'm, I'm very good at getting those really fine little details, pushing and pulling until it's right, you know. And because I had spent so much time with those fine details, I'm able to still get something very accurate, but very quickly. When I paint something very quickly, I'm still able to be pretty accurate, accurate enough to where I can do that more painterly touch and still get what I'm, what I'm looking for. That's amazing, yeah. So you've really got quite a technical background, but through the medium of drawing where you're able to replicate something as it is. When I was interviewing Hillary for her Brisbane Portrait Prize, and we were talking about that moment, we've both done paintings recently from photographs that we've taken, but trying to take that leap of, okay, when am I gonna let this photograph be a photograph and take my painting to how I want it to be? And for me, that came in to colour matching. I was really struggling with trying to colour match exactly the colour to the point where I got a photo on my pa on the Pantone app and I'm trying to match the colour, and but I'm disagreeing with that colour because it's not the colour that I actually think it should be. And so, yeah, that was a point where I, I had to just make my own decision of what colour I wanted it to be. How are you taking that leap? Like what little steps are you taking to move away from the photo that's helping you? Yeah, I, I struggle with the same thing that both of you are struggling with. Um, I find it funny, you know, we both work at Court and Chroma and it's like, I was just thinking about how you were explaining that and how I have guests here that will be like trying to exactly match the color that's in my painting and I will <laughs> tell them, you, know, you don't have to match it exactly. You can mix a blue that you like, you know, but then it's funny how in our own practices, it's still very hard to do that. It's something yes. that we all kind of, try and get that exact blue or you know um i think what because i've seen a number of artists that almost they don't finish it looks like they haven't finished the painting or they've deliberate deliberately made half the painting so painterly but then there's a section of it that's you know that photo realism so the technical elements there which blows me away because there's so much skill and i think skill a lot to do with skill is practice and repetition but then they've really added this expression and to me their personality by getting a bit wild and painty or just leaving the process to show through. Obviously this is just my opinion. The more you paint, the more you you work on your, your practice, the more you know where to pull back, finished by not finishing it. That's something that's really amazing about you is that your depth of knowledge and it's unreal. Like you clearly have that passion to really get behind something and, and learn it from start to end from your background in drawing, like every single medium that you're exploring will just lead on to the next and all that knowledge that you have just seeps through. Thanks Eddie, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I had a lot of fun, so I'd love to do it again. Yeah, I, that'd I, be great. I, so cool, Adam, I can't wait to see what you, what you come up with next. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. You can find all the reference photos and more details about Adam's work, as well as all the other finalists on the Brisbane Portrait Prize website. And you can also find Adam Southgate on social media. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next time.